Alrighty, so I'm back from Barcelona, you beautiful buggers. Good to see you again, obviously, and it's time to actually do some work, I guess, instead of just downing endless Australias and Patanas Bravas. And it really was an action-packed affair, not as many big launches as back in the day, but loads of people again. Kind of felt like it was getting back to normal since, you know, two years of COVID fun times. Only difference being now you have to wear a mask full time, so I had the delightful day-long experience of sucking on my own stale beer breath. So anyway, lots of hot tech shenanigans to recap on, and I'm not going to lie, I am unsurprisingly hanging like a giraffe's clag nut, so let's just crack on with it. Jingle me. Techspert Weekly. So first up, it definitely felt like MWC 2022 was the battle of who can fill her up fastest. Actually, that sounds decidedly dodgy. What I mean by that is uh, the battle of who's got the fastest smartphone battery charging tech. Realme was the first to announce that it had nailed 150 watt fast charging, which is bringing to the GT Neo 3, hopefully coming very soon indeed. But then, plot twist, just an hour later, Oppo throws some serious shades by sending out a press release saying they've nailed 240 watt charging, which can juice up a 4,500 milliamp battery in just nine minutes. And apparently with the bonus that it doesn't explode your phone into red hot burny fragments. I've got to admit, it did kind of feel like one of those school playground efforts. You know, you've just brought in your shiny new Donatello action figure with the spinny kick move. Everyone's like, wow, that's really cool, man. But what's this? It's Kevin. And what's he got? Oh, look, it's the turtle party wagon with the flip top and the super rad accessories. Yeah, well, you can just suck it, Kevin, you mophead prick. The only reason you get so much good stuff is because your parents are divorced. Twat. But of course there's bugger all mention of when, if indeed ever, Oppo will actually get around to shoving this battery charging tech into an actual smartphone and do it really needs 240 watt charging when, you know, 150 watt charging does a pretty good job, you know, you get full charging in under 20 minutes, uh, even with quite a big battery, so... Mm -hmm. And MWC also saw the launch of quite a few phones, mostly budget affairs, although Realme also came swinging at overpriced flagships with its 600 quid global version of the GT2 Pro. This boasts premium specs, including that snappy D8 Gen 1 and a very respectable 50 megapixel main shooter. Or for an early bird price of just 400 quid, you can snaffle the standard Realme GT2, which still packs the top end Snapdragon 888 chipset, while scaling back some of the secondary camera lenses. So you get a bog standard ultra wide angle snapper and no weird microscope lens jobby. There's a few other little tweaks and differences chucked in, like the OLED screen isn't quite as sharp, doesn't support the full refresh, but overall looks like a great, still pretty premium smartphone for a nice mid-range price. I'm going to bring you a full unboxing and hands-on fiddle with that soon. And if you want to know more about that Pro, well, my full unboxing of that bad boy is live right now as well, so have at it. And at MWC 2022, we're also treated to an Honor launch, its fresh new Magic 4 smartphones, which bore some proper big boy specs. Both the standard and the pro versions are powered by that 8 Gen 1 with a 50 meg primary and ultra wide angle shooter and a periscope lens chucked on top, which is upgraded to a 64 meg MOFO on that pro model. They both boast a poppy OLED screen and stereo speakers, they're running Android 12 and that Magic 4 Pro can also charge at 100 watts either wired or wirelessly bloody heck. And yes, Honor really did call that circular camera bump the Eye of Muse. Muse as in the band or the thing? I, I really don't know. I mean, I'm sure it sounded a lot better in Chinese. For less cash than that, you'll be able to grab the Poco X4 Pro, which is basically just a rebranded Redmi Note 11 Pro 5G, or one of several cheapy TCL blowers. And HMD Global also added even more budget Nokia C-Series branded handsets to its repertoire, offering basic specs and Android 11 Go for just over 100 quid. And laptops, yes, dig got above, there were laptops, including updated versions of Samsung's skinny Galaxy Book Pro machines and a new 2-in-1 from Huawei called the MateBook E. And Realme launched a laptop as well called the Book Prime, which, like that Huawei MateBook, uses the older 11th gen Intel technology, but should still be absolutely fine for browsing porn or doing other things, maybe, that aren't porn, if that's what you want to do, you sicko. But anyway, that right there is my bleary-eyed hungover recap of MWC 2022, the bits that I can actually remember that happened. Um, so yeah, I hope that wasn't too much of a disappointment. So now it's time for the part of the show that's like a warm hug from a hungry polar bear. It's fewer comments. Fewer comments. <laughs> This week we are kicking off with Richard. Hello, Richard. Says uh, there are certainly some landmark events this year in Blighty. The Queen's Platinum Jubilee, Metro breaking the championship goal record. Come on, Fulham, and the 100th episode of the legendary Textbook Weekly. Legendary is very kind indeed, sir. Thank you. Otherwise, I suppose you can also be legendary for reasons that aren't particularly good. 
And yeah, I keep forgetting about the uh, the Platinum Jubilee jobby this year as well. Another excuse to start drinking at 10 a.m. and basically don't stop for about three days. God bless you, Madge. And also, yeah, great to see Fulham uh, absolutely smashing the league this year as well. So uh, yeah, hopefully you'll actually manage to stay up this time. And hopefully at some point, Sunderland will be playing you again in the Premier League uh, once we stop being so utterly cack. Uh, Info Orange says, the tech show that keeps us all sane, although not sober. Grab yourself a wee dram of the Ardberg to celebrate. Um, yeah, maybe not so wee, but definitely sounds cracking. As Mr. Ground Zero, it's Jacob from uh, Wuhan. Uh, back again says, uh, Man, given the current situation, I hope my VPN would still work till next episode so I can watch Textbook Weekly 101 in Wuhan. Yeah, I've got to say, it has been feeling a wee bit end of daisy in recent times, certainly this last couple of years or so. Maybe just a good time to just jack everything in, go find a nice hall to live in, you know, take a sack of luncheon meats and a briefcase full of 90% booze. That's a bit of cheeriness there for a Friday afternoon. Um, anyway, Mo says, Textbook Weekly 100 was as exciting as that warm pint of flaccid beer, Chris. Yeah, 100% fair and accurate feedback, sir. Um, yeah, no, definitely I'll try and pull my finger out and uh, really go all out, pull all, all, all the stops for episode 200, get a really jazzy affair on the go, if we're not all reduced to our component atoms by then, of course. Uh, Oliver says, Barcelona plus Uncle Spurt plus how much sangria can you drink before you vomit all over yourself? Yeah, me and Sang... Me and Sangri do not get on well at all. In fact, I'm starting to get the reflux <laughs> from uh, just the thought of it. Um, it back in the day, uh, it was like a Spanish-themed nightclub. Uh, and of course, they were doing like jugs of the stuff for like five quid, which seemed like a great idea until the point where I was projectile vomiting all over a mariachi cactus, I think it was. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't even particularly like Sangria, but you know, five quid a jug. Who, who am I to argue? Uh, a, a broke pisshead. That's exactly who, who I am. Uh, Sebastian says, happy 100th episode and greetings from sunny Catalonia. Proper nice weather over there, mate. Absolutely stunning. In fact, the, the top of my head is decidedly singed now. Because, of course, I didn't have a, a cap or anything out there. The only hat I had was a big woolly effort, which, of course, I was wearing on the, uh, the stroll to the airport this side. So it's like, which do I go with? Do I go with, you know, just a little bit of sunburn on the top of the, uh, the old slap head? Or do I go with full-on heat stroke? But yes, very, very jealous of uh, that gorgeous February weather. So, so nice. Uh, next up, Hoots N7 says, you should do a pint of the week section on this as well, making you possibly the only tech slash beer review channel on YouTube. Yeah, it's, I mean, I don't know, because all of the tech hacks that I know uh, love a drink. I mean, that's part of the reason why you become a tech journalist is because the beer is crap, but at least you do get free bars at like every launch event, so you just have your fill. Although a lot of the tech events these days, they pander more to the uh, the youngins who uh, seem to prefer those sort of weird green smoothies like kale and quinoa or what, whatever the hell else they are. It looks like something you've just scraped off the bottom of your boot. Anyway, yeah, like me doing beer reviews would, would not be informative or useful at all. It would literally just me with a pint going, hmm, that's nice. Hmm, that's nice. But one tech journal I know does do beer reviews for Shortlist uh, magazine, so they've got their up, up on the website. Uh, so definitely go check those out because he knows his stuff if you like your yeah, crafty sort of beers. Uh, Will says, I just received an email about the upcoming Motorola Edge Plus Plus. Yes, there was two plus signs. Please, dear God, tell me that was a typo and there's not another new Motorola inbound because uh, there's already quite a few that I'm uh, sort of on the precipice waiting to review. Uh, also on the subject of Motorola, Ian says, any news on the Moto X30 Pro would be appreciated, Chris. Looks like an awesome device, especially for the money. Uh, so yeah, so it's going to be called the Moto Edge 30 Pro, apparently, when it does finally launch here in Blighty. It should be around the sort of seven to eight hundred pound mark. Uh, so it certainly looks like a solid flagship smartphone, great specs and everything, comparable to the Realme GT2 Pro. So if you want that stock Android vibe, could be, uh, could be a good alternative. Uh, Michael says, congratulations on 100. The last two years have been rough, uh, but you've helped through both the lockdown and the loss of my wife. Uh, not bad going, you drunken Mackham from a pit yakka. Um, yeah, no, really sorry to hear about your, uh, your wife, Michael, mate. I mean, rough doesn't even begin to cover that. Massive condolences. Um, but glad to hear you're, you're sort of keeping all right and glad that somehow me slowly going mental, rambling to myself in my old garage is <laughs> somehow helping out. Uh, that's, that's good to hear, man. Next up, it's my man Joe Hickey, part of the uh, the purposeful, the pu purple, purpose, purposely pixel team. That is f***ing hard to say when you're hungover and knackered, Joe, mate. Jesus Christ. Um, says, looking forward to at least another 100 episodes, Uncle Spurt. Thank you very much. 
Uh, would love to have a beer and talk shit with you and Matt Tyler one day. Let's make it happen. Uh, yeah, for anyone who uh, doesn't know, Matt Tyler and uh, another dude called Sam, they used to do Across the Pond cast, which was a podcast which you can actually watch on YouTube still, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and they streamed it on Twitch as well. And I joined for a couple of episodes. Joe was also on one of those episodes. And yeah, just basically getting smashed and talking about phones, which isn't too dissimilar to what I do on this channel full time. Yeah, Across the Podcast, sadly, no longer a thing. It was an absolutely f***ing great uh, watch, but uh, Matt's still doing the uh, the old game streaming on Twitch, and I will I will join a live session one day, mate, once time stops being a twat. Uh, Paul James says, I know you're a straight man, but I have to say I love you. Love from a gay man in Brighton. Oh, uh, thank you, Paul. Very flattered, sir. And I might actually bump into you in a gay bar in Brighton, because as it happens, I love 80s music and cheap booze, and generally both of those things are found in abundance in gay bars, so I'm a massive fan. Uh, Mark says, I can remember when you were on Rakombu. Uh, yeah, I can just about remember that too, although it's all a little bit hazy up there these days, because uh, that, was, that was about three years ago, I drank an awful lot of lockdown booze between then and now. I better make this the last comment because, again, completely run out of time. This, uh, blah, what is happening? Uh, Etienne says, MKBHD puts all of the money that he would have spent on booze towards the studio and staff. You should try it, Chris. You'll be able to buy Windsor Castle off her madge after a couple of months. I mean, to be fair, she's probably already had to flog it, hasn't she, to pay off Prince Andrew's lawyers? And anyway, I can't even decide if living in a castle would be a good thing or not. I mean, it must be an absolute twat to heat up in the winter one although on the plus side if you've got any charity collectors banging on your door all you can do is just bung a load of hot oil on them from the parapets but yeah point taken if i did I'd give up the whiskey for a couple of weeks i'd probably have enough uh, money saved up to like hire an entire f***ing staff and get people to basically just edit my shit and, and actually make these videos look good anywho that is unfortunately all we've got time for this week so a massive thanks to everyone who commented last week please do bung your questions comments whatever down below and we'll try and smash through as many of those as possible next week and speaking of next week next week next week what the f is next week what is actually next week actually I'm, i've been so caught up on all the mwc shiz this week that i can't actually remember what on earth uh, is happening in the next seven days well it looks like i've got the dentist uh, so that's going to be awesome. And also the car's due its MOT, so it looks like an absolute blinder. Oh, and also Apple are doing a launch on the Tuesday, March the 8th. Uh, so I'll, I'll briefly summarise whatever expensive bullshit they launch on, on Friday. Yeah, week after is going to be a bigger one, though. Like some more than Xiaomi have got stuff in the pipeline, so definitely stay tuned for all of that. And the hot competition that I alluded to last week, hopefully going to happen next week, so fingers crossed, stay tuned for that. Anyway, I'm off now. Kitties to pop a shitload of ibuprofen and Pepto-Bismol and basically just try and get through today as best as possible. But I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Thanks again for once again joining me to the end of this. Over 100 episodes now. It's just f***ing mental. Uh, but yeah, have yourselves a brilliant one and I'll see you hopefully next week. Cheers everyone. Love you.